Hey everybody, this is Michelle Baker, and I'm gonna do a quick video example of my animal collage live and film it for y'all so y'all can get some inspiration or get some instruction as to how to do it. So I've got um, several pictures here in this folder. And what I did is I took a picture of my boy. So this is Michael Steven. So this is the side of this is the size of my camera um, landscape. What I want to do is drop this into a Photoshop file. That's um, let's create a new file and let's work in inches and let's do an eight by 10, but I'm gonna do a landscape. Make sure your resolution is 300 pixels per square inch so it will print nice. Make sure it's CMYK color mode. So the color will be what it needs to be for our printer and then hit create. Okay, now you can take that photo and there's several ways you can find it. You can go to file, open, and you can find the picture. Um, but I kind of like to do it like this. I just um, I find the photo and then I drop it into the canvas that I've created. Okay, so then you see that I really should have created it um, with a higher quality camera. We probably could have made this project like five by seven or something, but see if I can make this work. I should have taken this picture probably a little further away so that um, I'd have more grass to work with if I wanted to put larger animals in here. Like I was thinking about a zebra, um, which I, yeah, I may be able to do if I like shrink it down, do something silly. But so, so that's what I'm gonna do is just um, enlarge my camera photo into an eight by 10. And then now we're gonna go and get the animals that I wanna bring into the photo. So it's important to look at your layers. Okay, so on the bottom background layer, um, I'm just gonna unlock it. And then this layer, I'm gonna hit Command J to copy it. And so this is my copy, and I'm just gonna double click on it and write copy and hit enter. I'm gonna take the eyeball off of it and I'm gonna lock it so I can't destroy it accidentally. And then I'm gonna put um, Michael Stevens' name so that I know this layer is Michael Steven. Okay, every animal will have to go on top of this layer in order to be seen. If I put it below, you won't be able to see it because it'll be underneath this entire photo. Okay, so then I went uh, and found some animals on the website unsplash.com. See this here, unsplash.com. You can get a lot of free high quality photos. So I found some lizards. Um, I found a zebra. I don't know if I can actually fit a zebra in this photo because I should have taken him a, a photo of him a little further away. So I downloaded some zebras. I downloaded some lizards. Um, you can find some, uh, some eagles probably. But like I showed in class, um, you know, if you wanted to find um, something on Google, you can. Um, Google Eagle, and then if you go over here to tools, um, you can click on images and go to tools. And you see how it gives you this drop down size. Just make sure you find something probably large to fit on your eight by 10. And uh, then you, this is saying that this Eagle is a large size, which means it won't be pixelated in our eight by 10. So let's click on this history.com and we wanna click into the website to get the picture. Otherwise you're gonna get a picture that is, um, yeah, this one cuts off his body. So that's not gonna be a picture, a good picture, whoops. <laughs> How about this one sitting on the, the log? That might be a nice one. So if I click into the website, I can actually get all the pixels that's available on this picture. So I'm gonna right click from the website. Don't right, don't right click from the icon that you saw before um, because it, it will give you a smaller quality picture. So I'm gonna to go to the desktop to my animal collage folder and I'm gonna save it there because that's a nice picture. Okay, so see, um, and it's, uh, it's downloading it there. Okay, so just to reiterate, don't 
don't right click here. Don't right click here to save the picture because it'll give you a smaller pixel quality. Okay, um, go into the website and right click on the picture from there. Okay, so now let's go back to Photoshop and let's see if we can bring that eagle in. So I'm going to go over here to my, um, my folder where I have all these animals. So I've got all these animals. And if I just wanna click on my icon view so I can see which one I wanna grab, I've got some lizards, some zebras, some squirrels, um, some geckos. And I'm just gonna see, the task is to bring in six animals. Um, oh, Emma Lynn wanted to bring in um, several of one animal. And that's fine if, if you wanna bring in one animal, um, uh, six different, um, you know, drop-ins, that's fine. It'd be nice to see it in six different poses um, so that I can see you work with six different um, pictures to make them blend in. And that would be a little more challenging than cropping, um, selecting the same picture and just duplicating it six times. So see if you can do that in the end. But um, for this one, let's go ahead and grab that nice eagle picture that I just brought in. And to find it quickly, I'm gonna just go to, um, There it is. Okay, so I want to grab that and I'm gonna hover over Photoshop until it kind of blinks a little and then let it go and it should come in. Okay, so it made its own, um, you see how it made its own picture? That's fine. I can edit it from here or I can drop it into what I'm trying to do. So if I take the lock off, it's gonna let me select this eagle. Um, so I'm gonna move this out of the way a little bit and then I shrink it down just a little so I can see the whole thing. Oh, it's missing a tail. So I'm not sure that this will work. I didn't know it was missing a tail. Bummer, that's such a nice picture. Um, I'm gonna look back at Michael Stevens' picture and see. Um, we might could, yeah, set him here and let the tail go down behind his back. So nobody would know that we're missing the tail. So I'm gonna to try to use the quick selection tool and see if that tool works good. So I'm using the quick selection tool. You can look over on the left-hand side and see which tool is lit up like a darker gray. That's the tool I have, quick selection tool. And you're just kind of painting around the edge. You're, you're clicking your mouse and holding it down and you're, you're watching these running ants grab everything that you wanna grab. If it grabs too much, you can go back and fix it with the minus quick selection. Okay, so I'm gonna grab, I'm just gonna paint over the whole edge and kind of just painting upward so it'll grab the outer edge of the eagle. And then I release my mouse. And if I wanna go back and fix this down here by the claw, I grab this minus quick selection and just move up in there carefully like that. All right, now to smooth out the whole edge of this eagle, I'm gonna to go to the selection, select and mask. Okay, the select and mask um, shows me I've got some green down here that I may wanna get rid of, and I'm gonna show you how to do that if my select and mask doesn't do it. So I'm gonna bump up the radius to like maybe five pixels. Let's see, maybe let's do three pixels. Okay, let's do a little smoothing. And you can you can zoom in and watch it. Um, you know, if the smoothing is too much, I can take it off. If the radius is too much, I can take it off. Um, if the feathering is too much, I can take that off. So just kind of watch your edge. You you know you can get a preview of what you're doing. So uh, the main thing is we don't want um, we don't want it to look fake. I'm gonna shift in this edge just a little into the eagle. See if that changes the, the green. Nope. It's not gonna take that off. But I also wanna go in and kind of remove that branch also that's down there by the claws. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so um, we've kind of smoothed out the eagle a little bit.
Okay, that took it, took a little bit off. And let's make sure it still looks good. Okay, it looks good. So now I'm gonna come down here to the output selection and I'm gonna put um, new layer with layer mask because on that layer mask, I'm gonna take off some stuff down there by that claw. So click okay. And you see how it gives you a new layer with a layer mask? Um, that actually saves the picture, but when I drop the picture into, into, um, into this, it would, it would show you the whole eagle. It would show you where it comes from. So I tell you what, let's go up here and ask it for just a new layer. So it'd be less confusing. How about just a new layer? And click OK, and I'll show you what that looks like. See, new layer has the eagle, just the eagle. So let's name it eagle. And let's take this. You can hit copy and paste by hitting Command C. Or you can click on it and drag it into the document that you're working with and let go. So there's our eagle. And if you click on the Move tool up here on the left-hand side of your tool, it's the top tool, you can click on it or hit the letter V to get to it really quick. Then it will let you move your eagle around. I wanna put this behind Michael Stevens' back. So you see these white edges? This is gonna help me shrink it. To get those white edges, you hit Command T. Command T gives you these white bounding boxes and you can shrink it down by grabbing any of them and just shrinking it. You don't have to press anything else. Now for this, I wanna set him behind Michael Steven. Um, so let's do a couple things. Let's get rid of this branch down here by the claws. Let me show you how to do that. So I shrunk it down to this size and I, I may leave him kind of big and obnoxious or I may just shrink him down a little more. Yeah, something like that. And hit this check mark to tell it okay, otherwise it, it will not change it. You're gonna to commit to transform it smaller. Once you do that, you can't get the pixels back. Um, you'd have to go back to your original photo to get them. So make sure you want it small because you can't take it small and then bring it back big without losing pixels. Okay, I'm gonna hit Command Plus um, to zoom in quickly. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna get rid of this information here. I am going to click on this add layer mask. And it's gonna pop up next to the eagle picture layer. There it is. When you're working here, you can remove pixels without destroying the photo. So this is non-destructible editing. I'm going to basically paint off what I don't want with a black brush. So I'm gonna to come to the left and grab this paintbrush. You have to make sure your color is 100% black. So I double click on my foreground color and it is not 100% black. It is something different. Um, so to get it 100% black, you can go to your, your swatches and get 100% black or you can just make it 100% black by putting 100% at the cyan color, 100% at the magenta color, 100% at the yellow color and 100% at the black color. Now this, I'm gonna to add to swatches and I'm gonna name it 100% black. That is the only color that will take off 100% of what you want. Okay, so now if you click on your swatches, if you can't find your swatches, you can um, go up to window and down to swatches and you, you'll get your swatches that way. Color, 100% um, black is also in the far left-hand corner. Um, but I like to see swatches. So um, this should be your 100% black color. Um, so let's click on it and see. No, that is not 100%. So I think I put it in the color library. I named it 100% black. Um, so that can get kind of confusing. I think this is what we just made right here. 
100% black, yeah. When I hover over it, you see how it gives me the name of it in yellow right below, 100% black. So we just created that swatch. And I'm gonna create like, yeah, so now that's, that's saved in this work that I'm doing here. Um, so now we're at 100% black. And if you double check it by clicking here, you can see it's 100% black right here. Okay, all right, so I'm clicked on the layer mask that we just um, added and I've got my paintbrush. See that huge circle? We don't need it that big. So you can shrink it by going to the size button right here and going down, or you can shrink it by hitting the parentheses that's right beside the letter P on your keyboard. You can make it small, and then it, the one to the right of that will make it big again. And that's kind of a quick key command that I use a lot. So once you're 100% um, black, I make sure that my opacity is kind of like halfway. So it's not too abrupt and gives me sort of a, um, a gentle removing of the pixels that's up close to the claw. The more you click, the more it takes away. And I don't wanna take away the eagle's foot. Um, so I click to get, to remove what I wanna remove. Okay. So there's that green we wanted to take away. It's gonna be hard to see the size that I'm shrinking the eagle, but um, you know, if this were real detailed, I would want you to know how to remove what you need to remove. Um, so this looks like it doesn't have a claw at the end and there is a way to put a claw on there that I can actually show y'all and make it look like it was always there. Um, okay, so this is gonna be really cool, watch this. I'm gonna take off this claw and put it on this finger right here, just for fun to show you how to do something like that. Click on the eagle picture, use your quick selection, and just highlight the claw that you want. Shrink your little brush so it'll go down. Um, oh, make sure you're on the plus, I was on the minus. Okay, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't taking it like I needed it to. Okay, see how it grabbed that? All right, and then, just gonna push it off to the edge. Okay, um, I'm gonna hit Command C and Command V to paste that little claw right here. And I'm gonna name that layer claw. That's all it is, it's just the eagle claw. Now I'm gonna hit Command T to grab it and put it over here on the tip of this finger. I'm gonna shrink it just a little so it'll fit. Shrink it a little more. And watch how it almost blends perfectly, but I'm gonna add that layer mask on there and take off just a little bit of that green that's sticking out from the other picture. And then kind of just take off a little bit here so it looks like it blends. Just a little, just a few pixels so that it'll blend. See how that looks like it's actually on the tip of that finger? Now I'm, I can merge that to put it permanently there. And I think I will by clicking on this layer and then clicking on this layer, going up to these lines. Once you do this, you can't undo it. So if you want to save a copy so you can come back and change it later, save a copy of it and take the eyeball off of it and then work with what you merge. I can also just leave them like that. But anytime you leave them like that, you want to group it together so that Anytime you move your eagle, the claw moves at the same time with the whole eagle. Okay, so now that we have the claw ready, um, we need to figure out how to set that eagle on his shoulder. So let's click on the eagle and hit Command T. It's gonna move everything within that group. So if we put it here, we would know that the tail's missing. But if we put it here, we can hide the fact that the tail's missing. So, a good idea might be to um, try to put, um, maybe shrink it down a little more and try to put um, his shoulder in front as if the body of the eagle goes behind the shoulder. Okay, so I'm gonna click on the Michael Stephen picture and hide the eagle for just a second. What I want is this shoulder. I wanna select, the shoulder with the quick selection tool. 
So I'm just gonna use the quick selection tool, it's really handy. Um, I'm gonna just come down here and select really just this portion of um, in, in the side of his face that needs to be in front of the eagle. Okay, so I'm going to use the selected mask because I want that selection to look natural. I'm gonna go in just a little. And I think that looks good. I want it to be its own little layer, um, new layer and click okay. And so now we turn on this layer and it looks real natural, right? But we've actually got an extra copy of him on top of the original picture. So if we put the eagle below it, watch what happens. Michael Stephen is now in front of the eagle. And we just erase this part of the shoulder to make it look like that claw is holding on his arm. And so to, in order for me to know what to erase, I need to see the eagle. So I'm going to click on Michael Stephen and take the opacity down. I'm clicking on that little section that I clipped out of his shoulder. And I'm going to um, take off um, the, the part that's his shoulder so that the eagle claw comes through. So watch this. This is Michael Stephen. I'm going to add an adjustment, a layer mask right here. I'm going to use that black brush again. And I'm going to zoom in. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm actually taking off the pixels of his shirt on that little tiny clipping mask that we made of his shirt. And I'm gonna make it look like the eagle is, um, is sitting on his shoulder, but that the tail is going behind his shoulder. Okay, so I know that this is taking a long time, um, but our class is only an hour. So sometimes I have to film stuff like this for you so that you can watch it again on your own time. You can always save the link and come back to um, my YouTube channel to really get uh, hone in these techniques, get them down pat and memorize them, revisit them, use them on different pictures so that um, it becomes a skill that you can continue to use. Um, you just kind of have to keep doing it in order um, for it to commit to memory. Okay, so let's look at, if we take the shirt and we take it, the opacity back to 100%, let's look and see what that looks like. We'll zoom out a little bit by hitting command minus. And that eagle is kind of bright, right? So I'm gonna click on the eagle layer and I'm just gonna take it down like to nine, uh, 91, uh, looks almost too opaque. Let's do 90, yeah, even just taking it to like 99 really helps. And I'm gonna see if what it looks like if we just go down a little bit onto his arm so that both of those claws are sitting there. Let's see, looks like I need to erase a little bit more of the shirt. So uh, the eagle looks better sitting a little lower, but now I need to erase a little bit more of that shirt. So, um, so go back to, to what I did before. Um, Okay, so I have my brush on like 55% opacity. And what it does is it, it doesn't take all the pixels off the first time you click on it. If it was a hard brush and it was at 100% opacity, it would take off the first time you click, it would take everything. And then sometimes that just looks fake. So you have to kind of click, click, click and, and, and do it um, on a case by case click until it visually looks good to you. So 
Okay. Okay, now let's, um, let's zoom back out. Let's put the opacity back on there. And let's zoom out and see. It's good. Um, I see some brown here that I need to take off. Uh, oops, see I hit Command Z because I didn't mean to do that. I think that's on the eagle that I need to take that off of the eagle. So let me take off a little bit off the eagle because it looks like it was showing through and we just need to see blue shirt right there. Okay, so I'm on, if you're not following, I'm on the eagle layer now, just taking a little bit off the eagle there. That looks pretty good. Um, I see some claw that needs to show through, there we go. Okay, now that looks pretty good. Okay, so here's the eagle. Looks pretty good. Let's get another animal. Um, so let me move over my board. Set this up here. You can exit out of these and always grab them again. Um, so let's go in here and do something fun. Let's um, see if we can possibly bring in a lizard. Um, hmm, maybe this one's a good picture. Let's see if it looks good. I'm gonna hover over Photoshop until it opens and then let go. I wonder if we can get that on Michael Steven and look good. Let's look. I think I can put it in his hand. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna grab that quick selection tool again. I think that that would work the best. Um, it's just an easy tool to work with, but in order to, to edit this, we have to take that lock off. Okay, so I'm grabbing this quick selection tool. This thing has little horns and everything. This is going to be funny. Okay, he's got all those little jagged edges that you want to make sure you get on his spine. Now, there, there are other tools. You know, there's the magnetic lasso. Uh, you have to do it a little slower. But for an intricate little lizard like this, it has all these little spine jagged edges. The magnetic lasso would work really nice. Um, I'm gonna come back and get um, the tail, that little piece that doesn't need to be collected, doesn't need to be clipped out, that little circle at the bottom of his tail. Okay, so I got my running ants um, on most of the lizard. And I want to come uh, switch to the minus, and I want to bring it in right here in between the horns. Then I want to um, bring it up right here onto his little little forehead. I want to um, click right here, see if it'll take some of this out, and it did. Very good. Push this in just a little bit on his little feet. And then come right here and click and see if it'll take this out. And it did. Okay, so then I hit selected mask. And there it is. Looks really good. I'm going to work with a radius of about uh, two pixels and see if it can kind of smooth out, feather some of this. I'm going to shift my edge in about 14 pixels. It might be too much. Let's go 10. And then select a new layer and see what we have by clicking OK. There it is. Click on it, drag it over to the Michael Steven picture, and drop. There's that big old lizard. And we want to shrink it down by hitting Command T, grabbing a bounding box and shrinking it. And you can have fun with this. You can make this thing huge or little in his little hand. Um, I can, you know, I can, um, when the arrows um, curl like that, I can turn it. You know, and have it um, 
and just you know try to put it anywhere you want it can so you can lay here this is kind of funny yeah I could lay it here and uh and put his thumb in front of it um so let's see if I can do that I like that um with, with um the tail kind of going through the but before I click okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in and see now it looks pixelated because I haven't clicked okay but um I'm gonna move him up right here a little closer to the eagle And like this. Okay, and click okay with this check mark up at the top. Now he does look a little pixelated. So I think it might be best to make him smaller. So I'm gonna hit Command T and make him smaller so that he'll look more realistic. Okay. So let's try that. And click OK. And then I'm going to get this layer mask and try to see what needs to be taken off. Um, so I think this dark down here needs to be taken off. So I'm just going to grab that paintbrush and see if I can make it look a little more realistic by taking some of the dark color off. I'm going to make my brush smaller by hitting Command minus. And the dark pixels, I don't, I don't remember the other picture, but it, it may have been, it may be the underbelly of the lizard, but on this, it just, it, it just kind of looks like he's just placed there. So we're just going to take that dark underbelly off real carefully. And and if we take just a little, it might actually look like a natural little shadow or something. Okay, so if you just barely touch it, it can, can take some of that dark, dark underbelly off. There we go. You can also up your opacity. I'm working with a really um, like 50% opacity, so it's taken a little bit longer to grab what I want. But you can take your time to get you know a nice edit. You don't have to rush. Okay, so this would kind of need to be a shadow underneath the tail to make it look like a shadow. You can create a layer underneath it by clicking this right here, create new layer, grab it, and I'm gonna write lizard shadow. Now, in order for it to give a shadow, let me spell it right first, uh, you have to put it under the lizard. So let's name this layer lizard. And this is our shadow. We want a black color, but we don't want it, but maybe maybe 5% opacity or you know 10. Let's try five. And then I'm just gonna, I'm going to create a shadow, but five's not quite enough. So let's go, let's go. Oh, for some reason it's it's still not enough. Let's go a little darker. Let's go um like 30. It's taking, oh, I know what it is. It's, uh, so I'm gonna hit Command Z a couple times to get that off. Um, it's just, it's not, um, for some reason we've got like a 
a very light color. Let's go to black and then I can take the opacity down and see how it gives you the shadow there. And you can kind of do like that to where it looks normal. Um, I'm gonna, yeah, see how it left a shadow right there? And if you back away from it, it actually looks like that's the lizard leaving that shadow. See how that looks? And we need to put a little underneath the lizard like that and create a shadow under his horn like that. Okay. So that might be a little much, and we can take it off gently by using that layer mask technique. See, and just kind of tap it a little bit and make it look a little less placed. There we go. See how we kind of just grab the edge, make it look a little less like a straight line, subtle thing. Okay. So there's the lizard, there's the eagle, and this is what you do for all the animals. So uh, I'm gonna keep going, but if you think you got it, you don't have to watch anymore, but I'm gonna try to add something fun, like, I don't know, maybe like a small zebra. I feel like being, I feel like being extra daring. <laughs> I wanna see what a zebra looks in there, like in there. So I'm gonna try to find a picture of a zebra and I may shrink it. Here's one, you go sideways. I need one kind of straight on, I need this one so that um, because of the size of my photo, I really am not able to take a zebra and make it go sideways. But let's try to take this one and throw him in there. Okay, so let's see what happens with the quick selection tool. Sometimes you have to make your brush a little bigger um, if it's not grabbing it um, very well. This has a background that looks like it's defined. Um, oh, I wasn't on the plus. That's why I wasn't grabbing it very well. I was on the minus quick selection. But if it's got a, a defined background, it'll clip it out really nice. Um, so they've the photographer here has made the background blurry, which might actually help us a lot in clipping just the zebra. Um, so I let go and come back into the body and bring it down the legs. Once I get down to the bottom of the leg, I let go and come over to this leg. And I was trying to avoid it grabbing all of it. Um, so I grab my minus and shrink it a little bit. And I'm gonna try to cut out this tail hole like that. And then um, I want to push. Um, I want to push it back in to the leg with the minus tool. Come under here. Now it's got a shadow under it, so we can try to mimic that shadow in our next picture to make it look realistic. So just kind of pay attention to how that shadow lays. It, it depends on the direction the sun's coming in too, in the picture that you're taking it to as to where you would put the shadow. Also, I'm gonna to have to um, work with the grass at the hooves. I may have to take patches of the grass and put it on top of the hooves to make it look natural. So it's just all kind of things that you have to consider when you're trying to make it look real. Just about got it. And then I'm gonna take the plus and just um, run over these ants. I don't need them cutting out anything out of the zebra. So I'm gonna go all the way on the minus. All right, get the plus, kind of make your brush bigger and just work those off, like push them off to the side there. Okay, so now I'm gonna go up to selection and mask. And take a look at what we got. It looks like I, I need to work with the side of the zebra face. I need to go back. Um, I'm gonna hit cancel, take me back, because I, I, didn't, I didn't push the running ants out far enough on the face. 
Okay. So I'm going to pause the video here and um, make a to be continued so I can come back and finish the zebra because I have a little baby that's waking up. Um, but I'm going to, um, to pause it here and make a to be continued and I'll come back and I'll show you how this ended up. Okay, but for now, I hope that helps you get started on your project and I can't wait to see it. Y'all have fun and um, we'll see these in class and have a good time. Thanks y'all.